What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 rendering tutorial for you. So up to this point, we've talked a little bit high level about working in rendering and also working with our materials. In today's video, I wanted to walk you through the environment settings and how you can use them to light your models to get different effects inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna go back into our example model. And if you remember, to get to the rendering workspace, you're just gonna wanna go up to design and click on the button for render. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take us into our rendering workspace. And if you remember, this is our workspace where we can make adjustments to our rendering. And we've talked about applying different materials in some of your settings. I wanted to talk a little bit about the actual scene settings inside of Fusion 360. And so to start off, just to get kind of a preview, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my in canvas renderer. So that's just gonna set this so that it's doing like a real time render inside of your viewport just by clicking on this button right here. And so you can see how when you do that, you get more reflections off of your uh, different materials and things like that. You can see how our lighting and everything else is now reflecting off of our objects, um, at least the ones that are reflective. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna talk through a little bit about your scene settings. And so in your scene settings, basically what you're doing is you're using what's known as an HDRI image or an HDR image in order to light your scene. And basically that's gonna be an image with a light or with light information associated with it. And generally speaking, inside of Fusion 360, um, you're really able to use any of these built-in library objects as well as uploading your own. Um, unless you're doing more advanced rendering, the ones that are built-in are probably going to be good enough for what you're trying to do. And so in this situation, you can see that um, these environments are driving the lighting in your scene. And you can see how this gives you a little option right here for current environment. Well, if you look at this, you can see that the lights inside of this environment are actually being reflected off of your objects. So you can see how there's four lights in here and you can actually see those reflecting off of your metal and plastic objects inside of your scene. And so you can adjust these in order to get different results. So for example, let's say you wanted to try a different lighting setup. You could just go down and like double click on this cool light setup. And notice how when you do that, the lights that are being reflected off your objects now look different. And so the reason for that is you're now using a different environment in order to light your scene, a different lighting environment. So basically a different light setup from inside of this image. So one other thing about this is you can also upload your own HDRI image files by going down, this, down to this attach custom environment settings. You can click on this button right here and let's say for example that you have an HDRI image file that you want to use. You can actually double click on this and bring this in and you can use your own custom environment in order to light this scene. So notice how when I do this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna load in my, my lighting as opposed to the lighting that we had in here before. And you can see how you can get a different result based on your own HDRI images. So there's a lot of places you can download these like uh, HDRI Haven or other places like that. Um, but if you do want to download and import your own HDRI images, you can definitely do that. And then to go back, you can just select the Fusion 360 library and just double click back on the image that you had in here before. And so once we get to this point, we can go back into our settings and we can adjust things about this environment. So for example, you can adjust the brightness of the image that this is using in order to light your scene. So you can drag this slider to the left or to the right in order to adjust the power of the light that's being emitted. So I'm gonna put this at about a thousand for right now. Actually, I may run this up to maybe like 1300. And you can see how this real-time rendering that's going on inside of your viewport is updating with that lighting information. You can also rotate and move that environment around by clicking on the position button. So when you click on the position button, what you can do is you can adjust the height above ground of that image. And you need to be kind of careful when you do that um, because you don't want to drag it up so much that you're actually being blocked or you're actually blocking stuff in your scene. But you can move this up and down, but you can also adjust the rotation of that image. So notice how when I click and drag this slider, the lighting is actually moving around inside of this image. Notice how your shadows are actually adjusting in real time as you do this. So this is actually adjusting the way this is lit and also the way that these objects are casting shadows because it's physically moving the environment around that's being used to light this. So you can use this to adjust the position of these lights and how they're lighting your scene. Then you can also adjust your background. So you could set your background up where it actually shows your environment if you wanted to. 
And so if I was to rotate down now um, and rotate around, you can see how this is actually adding that environment that we've inserted into our scene um, as a physical object that's gonna act as a part of our background. And so generally speaking, when you're doing something like this where you're rendering an object, you may not show your environment. You may wanna do more of a solid color. So let's say we wanted our environment to be darker. You can pick a darker color and click on OK, and this will give you a darker background. Alternatively, if you wanted a lighter color, you could also apply that and click on OK in order to get a light background. So you can either show your environment in here or you can pick a color and show that in here. And so in addition, you can also set this to show a ground plane or not. So in this situation, you probably don't need a ground plane because we've actually drawn a base in here. But notice how if you do select the option for ground plane, then you're gonna get some shadows off of these objects onto the ground. And those may be a little bit more visible if we go with more of a light view, but you can see how you're getting some shadows being cast, and they're very fine right here, but you're getting shadows being cast onto your ground plane a little bit. You can also set this so that you get reflections off of that ground plane. So you can see how right here, for example, and I'm going to turn off position, you can see how right here, if you turn reflections on, you can set your ground plane to reflect light um, so if you didn't want to model something out in here, you can just have this add an artificial ground plane. Then you can set that to be reflective or not, depending on the settings that you're looking for. And so then your camera view is going to allow you to set the physical properties of your camera. And so if you look at this, right, you have the option to go with an orthographic camera, meaning that the perspective lines in here don't go to a point. They run parallel to each other. You can also do a perspective in here. And you can also adjust the focal length, which is going to affect how much of this is going to fit inside of your camera view, right? So, so depending on how tight you want this to be, you can adjust this um, just like that. You can also adjust your exposure value. So your exposure value is going to set how much your uh, camera image gets exposed. So it's really gonna affect the brightness of your image. So if you turn this way up, this is obviously gonna be really bright. If you turn it way down, it's gonna be dark. So you can kind of play around with this to make sure you're getting the effect that you're looking for inside of your rendering. So then depth of field you can use if you want to, um, if you want to simulate a camera being focused on a certain point in your screen and everything else being, uh, being blurry. So you can use this to kind of simulate the way that a manual camera or a camera with more advanced settings would focus in your scene. Then you can also adjust your aspect ratio. So a lot of the time when you're creating renderings, um, they look better with a lower aspect ratio. Like it's really a good idea to kind of focus um, the viewer's eye on a certain area. Um, otherwise, if you just use your viewport aspect ratio, there's a whole bunch of like empty space in here. But if you adjust your aspect ratio in order to really kind of focus um, the focus what's being shown in your image, then um, you can really kind of change the way that your renderings look. And basically what this does is you can see how you get this kind of like light space and dark space. So the light space is indicating what would be shown in your exported image. The dark is indicating that, that wouldn't be in your exported image. And so you can use all these real-time settings to really quickly set up your rendering. And uh, I really like the result that you get when rendering inside of Fusion 360. But um, that's kind of an idea, whoops. So that should give you kind of an idea of the way that you can adjust your environment settings in order to uh, create different kinds of renders. Then once you're done with this, um, you can just go up into your render settings and just click on the button for render and you can render this out. And in this situation, I'm just going to render it locally and we'll go ahead and we'll set this, we'll leave these settings as is, you can do a PNG or a JPEG. Um, you can also adjust the size of the image that you're creating. And then once you're done with this, you can just click on the button for rendering. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna render this on your computer. And then once it's done, your image is going to show up down in your rendering gallery. All right, and so once you're done, this is gonna show up in your rendering gallery. You can click on this and you can download it by clicking on this button right here. And then if we open up our image, you can see how this has given us a rendered image um, with the environment settings that we set. 
um, inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, was this helpful to you? Is there something else you'd like to see me talk about with rendering? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.